cut the nuts in half. We use a chef's knife on a cutting board. It's very straightforward. You simply get the nut, hold it down on the cutting board and cut it straight in half. You want a sharp knife. A dull knife is not your friend. A sharp knife will actually be likely to cut your fingers far less. Doing this on a cutting board is very straightforward. That is the total of the involvement of the knife and the chestnut. Cut them in half. Uh, this can be done really quite rapidly once you get used to the whole concept. It's kind of like cutting carrots. Okay, what we're going to do with these now is parboil them. Parboiling is very simple. Uh, this is our wood stove. We eat with wood, cook with wood. You want to have your water at a rolling boil. And when it is, lift the lid, pop the chestnuts in, and bring it back to a rolling boil again, and you're done. That's it, and they're ready for the peeling process. Okay, now you want these nuts to cool ever so slightly so you can handle them. What we're going to do is take a pair of small spring-loaded pliers as the tool to pop the nuts out of the shells. And which plier you use is purely a matter of personal choice. The spring-loaded feature makes it easier uh, to work with by far. And you... <laughs> they come out very easily. <laughs> <laughs> some of the nuts if you are watching the the whole thing here some of the nuts actually came out of their shells in the parboil bath uh, so you don't have to peel those at all but what you're doing now is grab the peel with the pliers and squeeze and they just pop out these nuts at this point are not really cooked. They are parboiled. They are ever so slightly cooked. But uh, at this point, if you're putting them into stuffing, you may want to parboil them a little bit longer until the nut meat starts to get soft. They're crunchy like carrots still at this point. Or you can actually roast them in the oven on a cooking sheet at about 350 degrees or so. And that also works. You want to watch out if you are oven roasting peeled chestnuts. Uh, it's relatively easy to roast them to the point where they are starting to get dry. Dry chestnuts get hard, uh, very hard, uh, as hard as a dry soup bean eventually, and you don't want to be doing that. Now this is a halved Italian chestnut and that dark color that you're seeing there is the skin of the chestnut that has been folded down inside the nut meat. That's one of the curses of chestnut peeling uh, and it can sometimes be a problem even with our process. We think our uh, American and Chinese hybrid chestnuts don't have the skin folded in like this. They always peel absolutely clean. Uh, any European nut and any Japanese nut may have skin folded into the nut meat, which slows things down. But as you'll see when they get parboiled, uh, it's still much easier with the parboiled peeling process. Okay, our Italian nuts are parboiled and they peel. Usually they peel. Every once in a while you'll get one where the skin sticks in the inside and then you have to kind of get in there with your fingernails or whatnot and scrape it out. 
um, or a nut pick actually, oddly enough, can be useful to get that skin out of there. The hybrids and the Chinese don't have this problem. If you go to an oriental food store, they may or may not have fresh chestnuts. If they do, they're probably from either China or Korea. Nope, we got a bad one there, uh, which happens. And the temperature of the nuts is critical to making this happen. The cooler they are, the stickier they get. So you want to do this when they are hot. If you get a couple of sticky ones in a row, you may want to toss them back in the parboil and get them warmed up. Now, to anybody who has ever sliced their fingers open peeling chestnuts, that is a beautiful sight. Now, you don't always want to be halving your chestnuts, uh, although if you're doing any kind of cooking or preparation, this is by far the easiest way to do it. If you absolutely have to have whole chestnut meats, there is another technique that does not involve that silly X. Don't ever cut that silly X again chestnuts that we are either going to roast in the oven or by the fire and you want them in their shell for one reason or another what you do is you get your paring knife now this is not a job for the chef's knife and instead of that silly X you just take your sharp paring knife and you make one simple diagonal cut through the tip of the nut that's it done the reason the cut is diagonal is because every once in a while you will have a chestnut that has two membranes inside and if you don't pierce both membranes it may explode you can roast chestnuts by the fire we tend to roast them on our wood stove top any very hot surface like that will do um, or you can take these and put them into your 350 375 degree oven. The time it takes them to cook depends precisely on the size of the nut. If the nut is small, it cooks faster. If it's big, it cooks longer, and you have to make some adjustment for that when you're doing it. Uh, they also, when you've got one-sided heat like this, you have to turn the nuts periodically so that they cook on both sides. And uh, this is a, anytime you are roasting chestnuts. Uh, this is a job where you probably need an adult if you really want them to get roasted properly. Otherwise you wind up with nuts that are either not cooked or nuts that are burned. You have to have some concept of how long it takes things to cook, how long it takes them to get hot, and when it's too hot and so forth. And this is part of the trick here with roasted chestnuts. Any cut you make in the coat of the nut, in the, in the shell of the nut, is likely to widen and get bigger as the thing roasts. So that tiny little slit you make actually turns into a much bigger opening after the nut is roasted. Now, you have to let these nuts cool before you handle them. They will certainly burn your fingers when they come right off the fire or out of a very hot oven. And your fingers will tell you when they are ready. Just like with the parboiled ones, if you let them get too cool, they become difficult and or impossible to peel. Uh, and you can reheat them if that happens. Otherwise, what you want to do is as soon as they are cool enough that you can handle them, you want to crack that shell the rest of the way. Think of it as cracking an egg. There is a gorgeous chestnut. All in one piece, no crazy X. You can massage the shell a little bit to get that crack to spread. And then you just 
peel it out of there. It's very simple. No X, no bleeding fingers. Now these egg, these nutshells are hard and brittle, and both of those things are in your favor, but uh, it does mean that if you are very clumsy, you might in fact cut yourself on one. These are not that sharp. Here's one that has the double skin, so we have to crack it twice to get it out. But we just have two perfectly good pieces there. <laughs>